So this week we're talking about The Black Cauldron from 1985, a film that many say nearly buried Disney. This was a massive box office failure when it came out back in 1985. It had already been delayed a year as the then head of Disney Studios wanted to edit the film down. He demanded that at least 10 minutes was removed of the film. Because believe it or not, this film was seen as really adult and violent and mature and terrifying for kids. It was the first ever Disney film to receive the PG rating, but it was originally potentially going to get a PG-13 or even an R rating for its original cut and it's kind of mad to think that when you look at this film. It's missing a lot of the things that make a Disney film. It was also the first Disney film up until this point that didn't feature any songs but other than that in its tone it, in a lot of ways it feels very much like a Disney film. Very cutesy, very fluffy and just the idea that this film was seen as too adult just seems crazy today. Yeah it's not really violent at all is it? Mm. I, I guess this is the cut. On your point about him cutting it down for 10 minutes did he achieve that and then it came out to be 1 hour 20 or would it have been 1 hour 10? So ultimately they actually removed 12 minutes out and it's a shame because I've seen some of the scenes they removed, some of them are just kind of like, you know, you could have edited them out because they were kind of like meaningless little moments or whatever. A lot of it was just reducing existing scenes but some of them were pretty violent and to be honest the coolest animation in the whole film ended up on the cutting room floor. There's one sequence where when we see later when the cauldron finally comes to power and it starts raising the army of the dead, one of the henchmen that has his entire body turn into boils and pus and melt down until he becomes a skeleton and then becomes another member of the army of the dead wow pretty cool depiction very violent yeah. should have kept it <laughs> it was fucking I cool like that. so it was a real shame just generally a lot of the time like any of the cooler action sequences or shots those elements were just removed so what you get is hollowed out film where it has all the action sequences just with the best bits removed why was it delayed a year is it because of they needed extra work on the animation and stuff because like I don't know what your opinion of it was. I thought it was a bit poor for a Disney level film yeah, I but, thought it was but poor. to be fair Disney was never like known for having amazing animation, animation. Yeah, like, like I'm sure like back in the old days the 40s 50s era but 70s 60s 80s they reused stuff a lot like you've probably seen those Instagram memes where they've literally recycled the exact same animation across <laughs> film or the exact same animation profile sorry across film but yeah uh, Disney animation's never been particularly fantastic during this era and this was just another example of it, it I think some bits are great and this mm. was actually the first time they ever used any CGI in a Disney film. There's elements like when there's the bubbles or there's photorealistic flames towards the end of the film. Considering it was the first time ever the way they blended that into the classical animation was brilliant. Also just certain sequences really well animated but then other sequences were pretty poorly animated and it was quite inconsistent but to be honest for me that is always part of the charm of old school animation. I love the fact like I feel like with Pixar and stuff it's amazing especially when it, you know Toy Story first came out and it was all novel and new but once you see one frame you know what the rest of the film's gonna look like do you know what I mean yeah whereas classical animation they were a lot freer in a lot of ways to try different stylistic moments to set certain scenes like the way they depict nighttime can be quite you know a lot of time like they do that thing where they change the hair color and do certain tone changes which is completely unnaturalistic of what nighttime looks like but you 100% know they should have picked a night mm. moments like that there was a lot more creativity afforded to the animators back then this is why I've always been a big big fan of Aardman animation mm. like Wallace and Gromit because they use like the stop motion mm. technique the clay mm. kind of figurines that they make and I've always thought it has a certain quirkiness and charm to it that beats the actual uh, don't get me wrong Pixar was revolutionary the way they done it mm. but it, I'm a huge fan of practical effects mm. I've always always said it what I always look for in like early animation films is dubbing mm. and I felt in some of the scenes it wasn't well dubbed because the, the, the lip sync didn't quite match up the dialogue I I don't know if you got that in some things as well. Yeah, well, the main character, uh, Taran? Yeah, the main character. Yeah, we got a friend called Taran. Uh, the main character, Taran. That sounds weird saying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I just know, like, I'm so used to saying Taran. I'm just going to call him Taran. Yeah, it's called the, the, the main character, Taran, is a pig keeper. He's the assistant pig keeper. So he's not even the pig keeper. He's an assistant pig keeper, which I didn't realise was a job. Like, I assumed you just work on a farm, you work with all the animals. But apparently, he's just there to look after a pig. And the old man is given a proper Merlin vibe. You can tell he's not quite a wizard but he's got a wizardy sort of knowledge and he's got Merlin sort of vibes to him and yeah the dubbing is like usually with these sort of films like it could be quite inconsistent with the voice actors back in the day but your main characters would be top notch mm. whereas in this one like the voice actor is shit all I need is a, is a chance and I could be a famous warrior look at me hen I can do it ha <laughs> 
Like, like he is just yeah. awful. And it's actually, it sounds even like it's recorded quite badly. Like, he can't emote. There's never any cadence to his voice. You know what he sounds like? You know when you play a video game, like a little real-time strategy game, and you pick different troops, mm. and when you click on them, they'll have, like, a generic line they'll say, like, have an arrow ready, or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. He sounds like that. It's like that level of voice acting. But for some reason, I just love that about it straight away. Like, that totally brought me into it. And it's quite a niche thing to watch a, a, one of the supposedly, anyway, badly done Disney films. Because there's not many of them. Usually Disney absolutely knocked out of the park. If they didn't, they're forgotten and you just never hear about more see them. So that actually got me into it more. That, like, I found it quite charming, the fact that the voice acting was all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I thought Ty- Tyron looked a bit like me, man. Like, he's got the same <laughs> hair as me. Like, he's a bit taller than me. But the first few scenes, Declan, are a bit of a much of a muchness. Like, nothing really happens. Mm. Like, he's sent to feed this pig and, you know, he's just moaning. Why do I have to do this? And then all of a sudden, bang, we're into magic. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm. And I, I do kind of like that about Disney, how they just change the page from the mundane to crazy magic stuff in the Yeah, they're thing. really not fucking around. No, they're they just like, don't worry about setting it up. The narrator comes in and explains everything in two sentences and then we're just into it. So we were talking about some of the bad animation, but the pig was fantastically animated. None of the animals talk in this film. No, there is sort of creatures and monsters and some things that kind of resemble kind of animals, but aren't quite animals that do talk, but none of the actual conventional animals in this film talk. So the pig has to express whatever it's feeling and emote physically. And they did such a good job. First of all, his name's Henry, but I thought they kept saying Henry. Yeah. So I was a bit baffled. I thought it was a guy pig, but very clearly it was a female pig. Did a really good job of, of animating it and directing it. It was kind of nearly like a sexy little pig. Like it, was, yeah. like, it was quite... Yeah, big eyes. and <laughs> It really got across the femininity of this pig Sound in like the animation. David Cameron's <laughs> initiation task <laughs> where he has to... Black play. Mirror season one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, so I was like, I was quite into that and I was like, I like this little pig. So by the time the pig was in peril or kidnapped, I was actually already like emotionally invested in it. And to be honest, at that point, it was the only character I gave a shit about. Yeah, I mean, to set it up, the pig plays a crucial element in the film because it transpires from Merlin Grandad doing a spell or potion mm. on him that this pig can see visions. So it sees the black cauldron mm. and therefore Tyran and Henry the pig set off an adventure to find the black cauldron and Merlin Grandad's bigging up Tyran saying you can do this but Tyran's not very self-confident he's saying I'm just a lowly pig keeper so we get yeah. that element well he's of kind of back and forth firstly the film opens with he's miserable he's like I'm just a fucking little I'm not even a, an official pig keeper I'm the assistant to the sub, pig keeper sub pig keeper yeah <laughs> it's like fast times at Richmond oh, yeah, High yeah, 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 assistant yeah. to the assistant manager <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy exactly. he's not even a proper pig keeper so he's you know he's dreaming about being a warrior and going off but this is a big chance so he goes off on this adventure although it's not really an adventure yet he's just supposed to go to another cottage and hide the pig which you don't really get either because it's like you're already in a place like why don't you just stay yeah, here yeah that makes sense are they looking for you like we haven't established that this mm. he's given us Merlin vibes but it doesn't really get into whether or not he has any personal experience with the evil skeletal big villain in the movie anyway who cares so he's told go off hide out in this little cottage with my pig <laughs> with the magic pig so he sets off and fucks it up instantly where are you Henwin? Oh no! He sets off and seemingly goes through some forest, and Henry gets lost um, mm. pretty, pretty quickly. Makes Tyran stumble about, and then and then run into this kind of moustached <laughs> <laughs> rabbit creature. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I, don't know that's what I was saying before, that none of the conventional animals speak. Yeah. I kind of... It was like a monkey dog. Y- yeah. Sort of. Yeah. It kind of behaved. It emoted like a dog at times, but it had hands like a human. And I guess it was just a generic creature. I love films like this where... It's the Wizard of Oz. He comes across yeah. like his different little companions that end up joining him. And they become a little group all working together to save the day. Usually there's a chick who ends up becoming like the romantic interest. But usually there's like maybe a dumb one or an old man or something. We end up getting an old man, and there's always that annoying one that no one likes, but everyone ends up liking in the end, and that's this character. Usually, I'm a fan of those characters, but I fucking hate this little thing. He was giving me proper Jar Jar Binks vibes. You you say Wizard of Oz, I mm. say Lord of the Rings. Walking through forests, stumbling across things in the forest, Gandalf in in the second one or whatever. That seems very broad to say it's stealing from broad, Lord of the Rings. but this fucking dog mustache creature sounded. Exactly like Andy Serkis's portrayal of Gollum. Put you aside and ask Piggy, then we'll be friends forever. Munchings and crunchings in here somewhere. 
We mm. need to get those crunchy. To... And then I looked into it because I was like, did he base it off him? It's, it's a well-known theory all mm. over the internet that Andy Serkis has seen this film and based his performance on oh. Gollum on the... Because it sounded exactly like him. That's really And then Serkis denied it and said, no, he based Gollum on his cat coughing up a hairball. The, the other elements I got like later on when they're walking through the swamp lands and then they go to a place that sounded like Mordor to me but wasn't mm. Mordor. It was Murkoff or something like that and they build up a little fellowship as well so I was like I had that as well when yeah. my, my brain was here in Mordor or dip. there was a couple <laughs> of different terms throughout the film that it nearly sounded like you know when something does a parody slightly tweaks the name of, of mm. all the stuff from Lord of the Rings that's my vibe yeah and to be honest Lord of the Rings was really really popular during the 70s the books and that was part of the reason why Disney originally bought the rights to another series of books that ultimately became the source novel for this film even though it's pretty different they were trying to get it made all through the 70s eventually finally started production in 1980 and then the film wouldn't come out until 1985 so it was a really long difficult production to get it done part of the reason of what they fucked themselves was the fact that they were trying to tap into that older mature teenage audience that would loved fantasy novels during the 70s and 80s but they didn't have the guts to actually fully commit and make a different tier of film because although Disney today you know Disney Plus you know they're happy to partition off a part of Disney Plus that's clearly for adult mm. content and they're not worried about how it affects their brand or generally being for kids but back then, it was a terrifying prospect for them. In a way, they did kind of end up ruining it because from not taking a chance, like, number one, if you don't take a chance, you're never going to win. And because they were umming and ahhing so much and went essentially decking for the safe bet, this film turned out into, like, a hot mess in a, in a yeah, way. Do it, you know what I mean? Had, it had that feel where you could tell a lot of creative forces were tugging in different directions, which is a shame because there was no point in this film that I wasn't enjoying it. I found the bad parts charming. Like, even though I hated this little munchkin character that showed up I was enjoying so you know sometimes you enjoy having a character to hate especially yeah. when he was getting like the shit kicked out of him or, or the other characters weren't liking him I was like getting down with that I was enjoying that uh, he was just such a little weasel though like his voice was annoying he was like so codependent and desperate for friends like he'd be like pouring at his thing but then the moment something bad happens he'd run away and be mm. like a pussy oh no 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 it's a terrible place just as I thought you're no friend. You're just a, a miserable coward. And he, he, he kept calling him a coward. Like, he literally, like, when other people would meet him, he'd be like, that guy's a bitch, man. And he was... <laughs> what, what this film had was an apparent glaring miss of one of those really, really lovable characters mm. that Disney always have. Like, I don't know, Hercules, the genie from Aladdin, Seven Dwarfs. Mm. Like, they weren't really... Be... They weren't really the main characters, but they turned out to be the most memorable mm. part of it. This film didn't have any of them. For me, it was the pig. I love that little pig. Yeah, like, even later on when we get to the three wenches or witches or whatever you want to call them, they were annoying as fuck. The, the fucking old man bard was an annoying bastard as well. But we're going to have to... Uh, to uh, uh, While they're trotting through the forest and he's meeting this weird little creepy munchkin man trying to steal his apple, <laughs> the pig runs off scared and ends up getting chased by two dragons. I thought it was really well animated. I really liked the effect. You don't see the dragons at first, but you just see the shadows getting cast on the ground as the pig is running across in the field. Yeah, I've got to give props to this sequence. This was quite good, actually. Mm. Um, probably one of the standout scenes in the film for me in terms of animation. So then we're properly into our adventure now because he has to go rescue his pig and you see the dragons flying off the eerie, evil castle in the distance, which is kind of funny because why did they need the psychic pig to find out where the evil skeletal geezer was hanging out my first bet would be the giant enormous <laughs> yeah. mountain-sized castle in the background they probably never left that hut though in it Good point, you, yeah. and like if there's no maps or nothing like or if anyone ain't seen it but again the castle very mordor saruman sauron castle vibe tyran has to climb up the rock face to get there and lo and behold evil skeletons taken henry the pig hostage isn't he yeah it's quite funny because considering it's really in the distance and it looks mountain-sized it seems like he's 
just gets there in about five minutes and then he climbs up to the top in about two minutes and it's just really easy to get into yeah going back to video games like this whole film is kind of like an early rpg where you could walk from like one end of the map in like five minutes yeah. and back again is exactly like that when we're inside skeletor's lair we're introduced to little green goblin skeletor i'm gonna call him bitch personal assistant because mm. that's exactly what he is he just follows skeletor around makes errors and gets shouted at the whole film kind of mirror the little gerbil monkey dog man <laughs> <laughs> yes. Calling him something different every time. Yeah. Kind of mirrored his character in a lot of ways. Physically and in stature, he was the same. Also had the same sort of relationship with the big evil villain as the little munchkin character had with Tyran, mm. where desperate for his approval, but never getting it and always getting shat on by him. Actually, I actually preferred this character to the little gerbil thing. Firstly, because I could actually understand what he was saying, but he had more personality to him. He had more charm. Like He was like a leading little bitch, like little Ian Bill type dude when he was around the villain, but then he'd be quite sarcastic and... Yeah, yeah about him when he was behind his back. Yeah. <laughs> We're just celebrating our success. Oh, I, I mean your success. <laughs> It's kind of like, I mean, I don't, I like my boss at work in case she ever sees this video. I doubt she would. But it's kind of like you relate to him because he's stuck in a job he hates. Mm. He's always getting shouted at. He probably never got promoted for like however long. Face to face, he's like, oh, I love you, boss. But behind his back, it's like, I fucking hate that dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> so I rated him. <laughs> Unlike dog monkey guy. I liked all the minor henchmen as well. A lot of time henchmen can just be in the background, but these henchmen had quite a bit of personality about them. They looked more fun, to be honest. I was I was quite curious though that they decided to go with human as the main villain henchman. Yeah, Seemed I didn't like get a bit that. Because there was goblins and monsters and creatures in this world, but it was quite scattered. It wasn't overpopulated with them. Yeah, to be fair though, Declan, these humans were like fucking six foot eight, yeah. muscular and intimidating to be fair. Like, so they look like they're having fun as well. Oh yeah, they're in there drinking their tank yards, fucking shit up, yeah. having fights. On demanding more women. Yeah, like, yeah. Slapping like... the girl on the arse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He's off to rescue his pig, but he pretty much immediately gets caught and thrown in the dungeon. And while he's in there, he, he comes across the blonde chick, who is apparently a princess, although we later learned that she was actually lying. Film's love interest, as we talked about earlier. Very cutesy, ditzy kind of princess. I could see why Tyran would like her. Would you describe her as that? I would actually completely disagree. She was more of the strong-headed, very competent and confident and assertive character. Oh, well, if you want to come with me, you may. Can I? But yes, I said you could. Oh, that wicked, wicked king. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'll, I'll change it around. I, ju I just labelled her as that because she annoyed me, <laughs> Okay. to be enough. honest. Like, she, well, turns out she was a big lying bitch mm. the whole time. You know, to be fair to her, she does help Tyra and escape. So well, she, yeah, he was just sitting there like he a He was just sitting dumbass. there like a bitch. Why um, did you not like her? I actually like this character. I think because of what Dogface, um, little coward bitch... <laughs> Since I was introduced to him, I instantly like decided that I'm gonna hate everyone else because okay. so, of his He's persona. Really yeah, yeah, he was that bad. He was Jar Jar Binks. -esque. From him, my hatred started to increase. So I instantly, you know, I'm well known for like hating people until you they are grow. the least welcoming, <laughs> yeah, yeah. warm, friendly person I have ever met. Within Rip Off Scallop or He Man's Lair, we're introduced to a bard that has been tied up in a, in another prison cell. Mm. And they're seemingly about to torture him, and he's basically trying to get out of it by saying how much of a legendary bard he is. And when he's saying it, mm. the little harp he has, the strings keep breaking. So I assume that that happens when he lies. I have sung in some of the finest courts. Oh. I'm only waiting for an invitation. There's a thing in films, especially supernatural films, where people are quite big on there being a clear rules and mechanism of how whatever magic or sci-fi element or horror element of how it works. And that's quite a big thing in script writing where they want it to have sort of clear rules of what can and can't happen. And I actually not a fan of that concept at all. I like the fact that in this, sometimes you just have a magic instrument for no apparent mm. reason. It's not magic that it can play beautiful music. It for some reason inexplicably strings break when you lie. And there's no other example of it in this universe. It's just 
just a magic pig if for we... no reason. Like, no, there's not any other magical animals. This is just a psychic pig, and it's the only one. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Like, if we take Lord of the Rings as an example, you've got Gandalf dressed in white. Sar mm. Saruman dressed in black, Star Wars, the Force is God, and the dark side, mm. like, it's very, very pushed down your throat that like, this is good, this is evil. So mm. I like the fact, I like, as a film goer, having the ability to make my own decisions on who I'm rooting for. Mm. And, and and this this film, you know, it, 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 it I like the fact that just random stuff happens and you just, it's Disney, you just accept Well, like you spoke about the witches earlier as well, they're kind of ambiguous character. They're neither evil or bad. They're quite neutral and they affect the story but they seem to affect it based on just main general choices rather than just black and white good versus evil so their so their whole premise is doing deals they're basically massive gamblers in it like mm. well, we bargain and like as long as they get what they desire they don't care how it affects mm. the bigger world do they that which i liked as well yeah. it kind of reminded me of hellraiser in hellraiser basically the main evil villains aren't actually the villain they're more the facilitators for the supernatural element that happens but they're actually fairly ambiguous they do some evil shit but they also don't do some evil shit and they also are quite fair in certain ways villains in that film are actually the human characters Tyran is kind of walking around aimlessly and, and comes across what seemingly is a hero's grave and then he sees under all the cobweb a sword and he says wow look at this sword this must have been some legendary fighter and he picks it up and it turns out this sword is very very powerful and can float around and do mm. I don't know I don't know why the sword's down there in Skadatul's lair or, or why he wouldn't have found it. I mean, he's living in a house and essentially hasn't found a whole floor for like the mm. whole time yeah. he's been there, which is really fucking weird. But again, this is Disney, so we do what we want. To be fair, like, I don't even know necessarily that it's his castle. The whole premise of the film, which we really should have started with, is the fact that this black cauldron is actually essentially like a magical prison containing the really big mythical all-encompassing evil villain from the past essentially the devil in this universe mm. remember in lord of the rings there's sauron who is like the big villain during the lord of the yeah, rings yeah. era but morgoth was his lord and is mm. supposedly infinitely more powerful than Sauron and actually created all the evil in the world and created the orcs and different creatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Created, had like an army of Belrog, which we only see one in the entire Lord of the Rings series and Sauron was just one of his generals. So it's kind of that same element where we're Skeletor Geezer in this world is the big bad villain but there's an even more powerful being. I was a bit confused though on what the concept of the cauldron is though. He's not summoning or resurrecting the evil entity itself. He's, he's using it to raise an army of the dead. I think it was kind of like a little Pandora's box that if you, you it, it releases untold evil that you can manipulate to essentially control take over the world right so i guess it's just a source of power and that was the thing he was choosing to do with it maybe do you know what it had the feel of you know when sometimes they adapt a movie and change entire chunks of it there'll be unusual elements that don't jive with the rest of the film and it's because that's an artifact from an old draft where it was closer to the original novel well maybe maybe in the oh. source material the evil entity is obviously evil and uh, <laughs> which yeah and then disney we <laughs> We've already discussed them trying to make this family friendly. Mm. Maybe they thought, fuck it, like, we can't add this madness into it. Like, mm. we're trying to make it a kid's film here. Yeah, what they do have is the magic sword now. Mm. So, Tyran is ultimate pussy. So, he's all the time, like... Do you I think that's a bit harsh. Uh, well, he's running... Well, no, sorry, go over He's running now. away from, like, fighting and mm. just saying, oh, I'm a pig boy, like, kind of thing. <laughs> and then he gets grabbed by this fucking... I don't blame him for this, actually. He gets grabbed by, like, six foot three human henchman this being a disney film i knew it wouldn't get too violent anyway tyron's got a little broom trying to fight mm. him and it cuts the broom and then we're like yes he's gonna get fucked up but then the magic sword we see its power comes to its rescue floats over fucks up massive henchman henchman runs away so we're like now tyron has a tool to get through this mm. film yeah so the magic sword basically does all the work for him it even cuts the chain on the gate and the three companions make it out of the castle and into the woods we're, we're all happy at this point because little bitch coward munchkin we thought had gone like we knew he wouldn't go to the castle because he's a he's a big coward isn't he but sadly for us he runs into munchkin again in the woods they say freeze a crowd and then he fucking turns up <laughs> 
<laughs> straight away he shows up and he's like oh hi uh, hi Tyron and he's like trying to be his desperate little friend again and he's immediately like oh don't speak to him he's a fucking pussy like that guy's a dick and just dismisses him straight away and none of the other characters really like him either so they're walking through the forest and then they inadvertently fall into what I guess is actually quite a genius trap they're walking through a puddle which then starts to turn into a whirlpool and sucks them down like a plug of a bath into an underground fairy layers are they fairies are they pixies they're like these weird um, little ethereal beings kind of like the little tiny chick from Peter Pan Tinkerbell Tinkerbell yeah kind of like Tinkerbell from Peter Pan I think they're more like pixies to be honest because I think pixies are like human fairies and that's what they seem to be to me yeah generally like pixies are probably the least used in fantasy films of all the sort of mythical beings do you know what I mean that you never really see them come up but the way I remember them generally being depicted is they're always tiny have wings and they're sort of in between even being physical beings they seem to be see through sometimes yeah, in certain yeah. depictions or they can teleport or appear and disappear and fairies are always quite joyful pixies are always depressed and like want their life to end and mm. this is what these guys <laughs> they're living a shit existence yeah. they? like in these weird underground tunnels which are completely in contrast to their appearance because they're all colourful and sparkles and whatever they end up having a conversation and tell them what's been happening and then to be fair to little old men pixies they do agree to help them they, they say we'll take Henry home which for a second I thought do they have an ulterior motive are they gonna take the pig somewhere else but they just accept it like thanks cheers and then they agree to help them find the black cauldron generally you can trust any character in Disney film by appearance which is kind of funny when you think about it because if you think like general depictions of bad characters they're essentially usually like disfigured a lot of the time like not the main villain in this but henchmen and stuff and it's kind of like Disney teaches you that good looking people are good and people that have disfigurements are evil I don't know about that man if I was walking to the high street to get a bus in it from home from here you know I might do it it's a nice sunny day and I saw floating old men round a young blonde chick <laughs> and a mm. young kid I'd be like hmm are these nonsense <laughs> yeah <laughs> so one of the pixies basically acts as their tour guide and takes them through the swamp in order to find the three witches when they stumble across them you didn't like these characters I actually really liked them I liked the big fat witch you know with the big jumbo tits who really fancied the old bard yeah the bard should have gone for that man and like, I, they looked like a perfect match, but he wasn't having any. Yeah, he of wasn't. Them. Well, I suppose physically she looked pretty nice. You know, like her body was pretty nice. But facially, yeah, she was a witch, she and she a like, her skin appeared to be <laughs> green and haggard, and like she had boils on. And also, like he doesn't want to live in a shitty swamp. But I've seen worse in the weather spins in Palmer Street. <laughs> yeah. no, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but they're having none of it, and they basically, like you said before, they're all into bargains, so they do a deal with them. What's the only thing that they have, which is pretty cool? Of course, they want the magical like sword but I mm. would be hesitant to give it up at the end of the day it's got them through everything and mm. if you're lazy you don't actually have to do anything it just floats and fights for you I'm not giving this up for love of money but I guess the ultimate aim is the cauldron so to get the cauldron they have to give up the magic sword so he hands over the sword they do some magic shit and just like that the cauldron appears but before that happens the three hags are discussing with themselves that the others can't see that we might as well give them the cauldron because it doesn't really do anything think and it's you know it's indestructible and they don't know that so although they're filling their bargain they're kind of fucking them over as well well they think they are but they're actually wrong mm. which is kind of interesting again is like, I like the fact that not everyone really knew what this cauldron was or what it did they're trying to trick them as well they're like mm. can I interest you in a cup instead can I interest you in something mm. or the other but what I don't understand about Disney films is like if this happened to us and it was three witches I'd be like but you're witches are you trying to fuck me over? Mm. <laughs> they, they just accept it. <laughs> but do you know what? They weren't. I like the fact that they weren't evil. Mm. They were just dicks. They were basically yeah. just trying to hustle people. Yeah, they just get enjoyment out of fucking people over. Mm. They are scummy in and that. And to be fair, like if you're doing a bargain, like it's, it's not your fault. The other person's stupid. Yeah, I'll be like, you've got a cauldron. I've got a floating sword. Who's winning here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they're just kind of chilling by the cauldron, all depressed, trying to figure out what to do. And it seems like they're there for a couple of days and nights. And poor Tyron is a bit deflated. He He's like, oh, I've given up the sword and we can't do anything with this cauldron and feeling all sad and, you know, wanting everyone to, like, back him up. And this is where blonde chick, like, they grab each other's hands and so she's like, I believe in you. So we see a bit of a spark between them in a way, like, mm. Tyron clearly fancies her. You know yeah, I mean? she's pretty fit. <laughs> the, it's funny as well in these sort of films, they're trying to set up a love interest with such little screen time. Because generally, for some reason, it's like the law in filmmaking that they have to kind of hate each other when they first meet. I don't know why. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like part 
apart the rules they got to go from not liking each other to falling in love in the space of maybe five or ten minutes of screen time that they actually share directly and exchange well, it, dialogue with each other what i don't understand is they're camping out in barren forests it's like you know full well you've already been to scatter's lair like he's going to be looking for you 100 percent. like why aren't you hiding why are you in the open forest <laughs> scatter has sent out a search party of humanoid henchmen and what happens is they discover them and it's not hard <laughs> they're just walking around mm. like we've already established this map is like five minutes long mm. so yeah. it's like they probably they probably just walk out of the castle and like just go oh they're there <laughs> they're, they're right there. yeah it's true actually good point they probably saw them from the car <laughs> yeah yeah scanner just opens the curtains oh i can see them and then they just walk out and the henchmen lo and behold catch them bring them back again to be fair to them it's a giant metal cauldron like how are they supposed to move it yeah you exactly. can move it anyway they just had to stay there so what happens that they get caught taken all the way back to where they started back to Scalo's lair so they get back to the lair and we finally get to see the magic cauldron do its thing I really liked again this was part of the uh, subtle elements of CGI that were used in the film very early CGI obviously in 1985 but we see the green cloud starting to emanate from the cauldron really good effect really blended in to be honest I wouldn't have noticed except for the flame that will come up in a little bit very sort of photorealistic flames that quite stood out if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have actually been able to tell that any CGI element for using it. it was really well blended so the army of the dead is actually really cool I really like this element I really like the animation I really like the look of them uh, the way the whole sequence of as they're getting resurrected and brought to life and they're coming out of the cauldron and rising up it's also called the fact that they are scattered all over the castle before you know in the plot that they're going to be resurrected they're just scattered all around rotting corpses mm. all around with their armor still on and it was a really cool element and I actually really like the fact that they're just everywhere and they all started rising from the dead and they're all walking out of the castle in their sort of zombie way not quite skeletons either like they do have some parts of rotting flesh on them so the design was really cool unfortunately we really don't get to see them do anything yeah it would have been good if they done some shit like maybe gone to a village and pillaged them and tax people up you know we saw the real terror that would have unfolded if our heroes didn't eventually win but it's Disney so we can't well you could have done it like you you wouldn't need them to be seen to killing anyone but say if they'd discovered the cauldron in the first 10 minutes and we see the evil army going out causing havoc all around the world because by nature of the fact when the magic is stopped they all return to being dead and fall on the floor in an instant you could have had a sequence where you see all over the land just as they're taking everyone over or burning down villages they all fall down yeah that's what I liked about Lord of the Rings because you know in the second one where they're trying to get to Helm Deep mm. because they know their say it's never been penetrated you see the orcs the army of the orcs like chasing them and they go to like little peasant villages and burn it down mm. and hack down like women and stuff and I'm like yes Peter Jackson got away with this being a 12 100% somehow. creates that sense of peril yeah. and it's just a shame because you don't get them to really see him do anything or get into any action they're not around for very long mm. before they're all wiped out <laughs> they're just sort of they're barely like sort of getting out of the castle as they start fading away unbeknownst to Scalloper he doesn't realise that little annoying Sasquatch dog has jumped into the cauldron and all of a sudden little green bitch assistant looks out the window and is like shit it's the army of the dead's melting away what's happened here and they run full pelt <laughs> run down the stairs and Scalloper's like no no I can't die but he's seemingly getting towards the black cauldron and melting kind of like Wizard of Oz Wicked Witch water kind of scenario mm. very lame he just kind of like melts away into nothing really I actually love the animation of how he gets killed by the cauldron do you mean just that fact that he just gets killed essentially seemingly for I, no reason yeah I love the animation Declan but like if you think about this whole film as a whole Skeletor doesn't really do much he, he stays in the castle he kidnaps mm. the pig who ends up getting away he's <laughs> He, he's been beaten the whole time by a sub assistant pigman boy mm. and like he never leaves the confines of the castle his army of the dead do get released they walk out and then melt and then he melts yeah. so he's a poor villain all I all. gotta admit he looks the part mm. he looks fucking scary and evil he's really big and scary and I'm not really sure what he is I, he's not a human he looks like that you know the horns and the, the I thought at first when I saw him that, that was kind of like a giant suit of armour yes but as he's melting and getting killed it, it is actually his skin and his face so he's just some sort of evil horn figure that I guess he's not like a species in this universe I think he's just one of those one off villains that look a certain way maybe maybe what he is is somehow the commander of the army of dead and he didn't die so his goal is to like resurrect the army of the dead to take over mm. the world for the all powerful beings inside the cauldron I don't know see that's the fun when a film has loads of holes you can just speculate yeah. wildly on whatever you want but my main point is Declan all in all he's, he looks great but he's weak mm. yeah he, he's, he's poor man he 
doesn't do much. I do know what you mean. Now mm. it's, it's, it is again like Skeletor vibes, where he kind of just sits around in his layers, <laughs> yeah. laughing maniacally, coming up with plans, but all in all, not actually doing all that much. But I like Skeletor though because yeah, he, he's he's kind of like Coyote from Road Runner. Like he hatches all these plans, but he's always beaten. Yeah, and he's like Acme his, products always he, don't work. Yeah, he's in his cars all like this time I will best he man, <laughs> and he's just laughing. So he's he's likable. Do you know what oh, I mean? He's, he's a trier, unlike he is, yeah. unlike this guy he's got personality whereas this guy this villain is very much a generic evil Boring. villain guy yeah. he has the evil voice call aesthetic but ultimately there's no real personality there outside of that the cauldron born arise my messengers of death our time has arrived but it doesn't matter now because he's dead so the witches tell our loving companions that to stop the cauldron's evil power someone innocent has to jump in it from their own free will and to be fair bless little dog creature thing here he's like I'm brave our oh dear and before he jumps in I wish the witch has never told him actually you die essentially if you mm. jump into it so you've got more to live for you've got loads of friends you've got blonde chick mm. she's gonna probably end up I'm just an annoying mother. yeah I'm just an annoying little bitch I've got no friends and Tyron tries to stop him but he sacrifices himself for the greater good kind of tries to stop him he yeah, does that yeah. kind of like no yeah 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 he just so. wants to look like he tried to do something good little animation here the flames shoot up you know what i'm gonna tell the truth here i did feel slightly sad when he sacrificed himself even though he was annoying like i didn't <laughs> I, I really just i was just like good like but i kind of thought then then he's not gonna be dead for long yeah it's it's a classic disney film he's not no one who sacrifices him himself no innocent who sacrifices mm. himself is dead and it's a shame because i was actually quite impressed i was like oh fair play they mm. actually killed someone off because the problem with these sort of films the problem with disney doing this sort of film in this way if there's not any real sense of genuine peril it's irrelevant how can you worry for any of the characters because you know no one's gonna die so the fact they actually killed off a character i was like oh fair play but the fact that there was another 10 minutes of running time i knew he wasn't there yeah. was gonna be some story element that was gonna bring him back to life the closing minutes the witches show back up looking for another bargain basically in return for giving back the little muppet annoying creature guy that we hate they want the black cauldron back in it mm. they've done their part i don't know maybe they can use it again it's the, seemingly the, the film is called the black cauldron yeah. so it's the most powerful i wouldn't trust them. yeah and they see now they know apparently it can do something and they say basically you've won but do you want rainbow floaty all-powerful sword back mm. and i was like i would be like yes i do want that back that's pretty cool <laughs> but the bard steps in the bard seems to be old and wise and he tricked him here he's very clever well you're not powerful enough ha ha and then they fall for it and all of a sudden munchkin returns and this is pretty cool i like it even the fat witch is kind of like she's like oh i love an assertive yeah man. Like, yeah she's still yeah. got the hearts for him I, I like it when he turns out because i'm like ha he's turned out but they've tricked him he's dead he's, he's dead they've given his mm. body back but he's dead so you're like oh well good i, I like this ending like he's dead Dead, like ha ha and then all of a sudden you hear him speaking his absolute garbage golem yeah. nonsense of like get the trick scene i'm like oh for fuck's sake and in here somewhere Ducky! you're alive he's alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really did hate this little character. Yeah. I, I was with you. I was disappointed when he came back to life. I wanted him just to be dead and gone. I wanted it to end of like, they've got him back, but there's all like little tears rolling down their, mm. their face as they look at a little grave. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Tyron, and then Tyron goes back to his shit existence of cleaning up pig shit. <laughs> cleaning up pig shit. And that's it. He's had his adventure. Now time to go home. So here's a question. And I realise that we're being idiots for like poking holes in this little happy Disney movie so much but you have a magical pig that can tell the future why not say hey what happens with this whole cauldron business yeah before we even leave the confines of their little pig shit cottage that's true Declan I mean the, the ending of the film much like a lot of it is quite weak mm. it's like granddad uncle Merlin just said my boy done well didn't he and then it just credits just roll and it's like yeah he's watching it through some sort of magic yeah hours. and who is he watching it with is he watching it with the pixies yeah again clearly he is some sort of magical being of some sort and the pixies 
Ortiz were in it, I guess he knew that they'd fall into the trap to right. help him. Like, so he's aiding them. He's an all-powerful being. But I guess the main point of it, Declan, is mm. he could have helped them a lot more, but he wanted Tyran to go out and show that he could be independent and be more than an assistant. He cleaned shit up. Mm. So he did do that. The fact that they saw the pig powered premonition, so that's yeah. a bit of alliteration, does that mean they changed the future of what it was going to be? Because they were never supposed to know about it. I guess so. I guess that the, the Skeletor would have raised the army of the dead and fucked the world up. But the only way Skeletor knew oh, where the cauldron was, was going to be was the pig. So it's a pig paradox. Yeah, it's inception. Pig it's inception. Predetermination. Yeah. Predestination. Wow. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but so, let's just, overall, let's, let's wrap up. Do you recommend this for our viewers? Yeah. Do you know what? I, I did enjoy this film. It's nice to watch a forgotten Disney movie. And for all the hate this film gets, I, I enjoyed it. You know, it's an hour and ten minutes of your actual time. Ten minutes of credits, hour and twenty minute running time. It's a short, concise movie. And if you're a fan of Disney films, it's definitely one to watch. Not because it's one of the best, but because it's quite niche, because it's quite quirky. There's a lot wrong with it. There's a ton of holes, but in a Disney film like this, does that really matter? There's some really annoying characters, but if you can embrace enjoying and hating that character, you know who we're talking about you know the villain is quite generic the storyline's quite generic but there's something charming about it that I actually really enjoyed yeah I'm gonna have to be the opposite and disagree with you that like, I wouldn't recommend it simply on the fact of it's short yes I watched this just yesterday and I came round here and I had already forgotten it I remembered the main plot bits and the and the characters but they weren't memorable for me so I've had to keep refreshing mm. myself for this review so it didn't personally have an impact on me so I wouldn't recommend it Declan personally but that's my opinion no.